What's up fellow hunters, Nox here, hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna talk longsword. Comfortable sets, fun sets, meta sets. Five builds for you guys, including some of my personal favorites, coming up. Before we jump in, all of these builds were made using just a quick sheath level 2 talisman with one level 2 slot, to make them super easy to recreate. But I will be showing my own personal versions of the builds following each of them to give you guys some extra ideas. And of course, any extra slots and skills on your talisman will just make them even better. Let's go. We're gonna start off with a build that is a lot of fun to use and one of my personal favorites, the Showstopper. A Paralysis Longsword build using the Rampage Blade S. I love using this when I want to add some additional support or just help lock down a monster that moves a lot or tends to get a little annoying. Usually the Rampage Longsword gets outperformed by other options, but this is where it shines. There are simply no other good or even decent options when it comes to Paralysis on Longsword. We customize the Rampage slots with Sharpness Type 1, Paralysis 2 and Affinity Surge. That gives it 190 attack, 15 Paralysis, 20% Affinity and White Sharpness when using one level of Handicraft. Pretty solid. 15 Paralysis might not sound like much, but it's enough to paralyze any monster you fight at least twice. And your fellow hunters will appreciate it. We cranked up the damage output as high as possible with the basic offensive skills and of course our Quick Sheet Level 3, which adds a substantial DPS boost to Longsword. All builds will have at least Protective Polish level 2 to keep our weapon at white sharpness for one full minute, and Speed Sharpening level 3 to go along with that, and also one level of flinch free so we don't get tripped by our fellow hunters. For my version I chose to go with the talisman that gives me an additional 2 points from Park Breaker, as well as a few extra slots that I use to fill out skills according to my personal preferences. Next up is our first meta focused option, the Invisible Truth. We're using the Phantom Mirage, which I'm sure everyone already knows has outstanding stats. An incredible 228 attack due to our Rampage boost, 15% affinity, a bunch of slots and even a small defense bonus. As you probably already noticed, this build comes loaded with skills and even has room for customization even though we're using a quite limiting talisman. For example, you could switch the Anjanath to the Chrome Metal Coil from the previous build and go for Protective Polish level 3 instead of Attack Boost level 2, adding even more comfort to the build. Either way, this build will hit like a truck. You'll see a pattern in some of the armor parts and skills on these builds due to how efficient they are. For my version, I switched things around a bit to fit a different talisman. This allowed me to add a few more quality of life skills, an extra level in maximum might, and have slightly higher defense. Aside from that, it's pretty much the same. If you're enjoying the video so far, I'd greatly appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. The Cold Knight. Elemental Longswords used to get wildly outdamaged by the raw options we have. But for a while now, we've had quite a few that can hold their own or even outdamage raw longswords in specific cases. The one we're using here is the Deora's Raid. 190 attack, a huge 45 ice, natural white sharpness, and a free level 1 slot. At first glance, this doesn't look super impressive. But when we factor in the Deora Soul Rampage boost, things get interesting. As soon as we strike an enemy, the Deora Soul will give us a 25% bonus to our affinity. This makes it super easy to have a 100% crit chance on weak spots with this longsword. We're of course stacking Ice Attack up to level 5 here to get as much power out of it as possible. This build can do some serious damage to monsters like Rajang or the Diablos family who are weak to Ice. I also just love the unique design and how this longsword changes from an axe to a scythe when your spirit meter is glowing. My version switches a few things around and allows me to have Protective Polish level 3 instead of level 2, but in exchange I'm losing one level of speed sharpening. Make sure you leave your own favorite elemental longswords in the comments below to help those that might be looking for some ideas. On to our next meta focused option, the Val Dominator X. The X just standing for a variable that we'll get to in a second. There's very little to say about this build. We're using the Phantom Mirage as our weapon of choice here again and running the full Valstrax set to make use of its amazing offensive potential. The thing to note here is that we don't have much room to fit in skills to raise our affinity which is why it becomes advisable to bring along a fighter palico that has the move called Rousing Roar. Once your palico uses that move, you will instantly gain 30% affinity, which helps out a lot. This build has the highest DPS potential out of all of them. That is, if you don't mind the particular playstyle that comes with using it for its offensive capabilities. Whenever we use the full Valstrax set, we want to constantly be at 80% health or less. That gives us the nice 10% attack boost from its Dragonheart skill but this can become quite tricky when playing online. If we cannot consistently keep our health at 80% or less, we're better off going with one of the other builds for a more consistent damage output. I'm personally not using this build very much at the moment, which is why there's no additional version for this one. Next in line, the Tiger Saw. I love this build. Not just because it hits really hard, but also because I've always loved the look of the Tigrex longswords. We're using the Tigreen Need. 
It has a ridiculous 230 attack, minus 20% affinity, and natural white sharpness. For the Rampage skill, we definitely want to get Silkbite boost for a massive damage increase on Wirebug moves. We have all our standard essentials, comfort skills, and a few extra levels in Critical Eye. If your Talisman has an extra level 2 slot, you definitely want to go for Critical Eye level 7 here. Of course, like for the previous build, we can also bring along a Fighter Pelico with Rousing Roar to further increase our affinity. That will help offset the minus 20% from the Longsword. I could have gone for a few levels of attack boost here, but my version once again runs the Talisman with the additional slots and the two levels of Partbreaker. Messing around with it for a bit, I actually found myself really enjoying Partbreaker on Longsword, and even having faster clear times due to the monster being grounded sooner or more often. If you enjoy this kind of content and tips on everything Monster Hunter related, hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more. Share the information with our fellow hunters and leave any form of feedback you have for me in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.